Good afternoon. Let's try this one again, shall we? 2024 National 5 Chemistry uh, Part 2. This is the written paper. Please don't watch this. It's going to cause you any stress. Um, go and relax and study for your next exam. Um, and again, you can't use this, I'm afraid, as an accurate judge of your mark. Just in case anybody from the SQA is listening. And I don't make any money at this. It's an educational channel, so I'll get no money at all. It's all non-profit. Balancing equations. If you're lazy like me, you'll just put a half in there. Or if you want the other version, you can do this. Uh, I've, re um, I've recorded these all in advance, guys, so I'm just going to rip through at maximum speed, pause it at any point and compare it to what you think. It's a catalyst because it was recovered unchanged, that's how I know. We've got collecting oxygen here. Now, at National 5, the SQA tells us that water, oxygen gas is insoluble in water, so that's your SQA answer. As I joked about before, ask your nearest fish, they'll disagree. Um, we've got to calculate the volume of gas collected. It's going to be um, 30 times 1.2, gives us 36. Don't put a unit, units in the question. This one here, reactions get slower as they go along. So if it was a rate of 1.2 up to 30 seconds after 30 seconds, it will be less than 1.2. But I don't know how much they're looking for less than 1.2. It's a strange question. So I'm a bit stuck on that. I, I would imagine anything less than 1.2 should get the answer. We'll find out in August when the official answers are out. They want the change of colour, colourless to cloudy. I think you need both. Endothermic is a reaction that takes in heat. Shape of ammonia is pyramidal. Don't worry about the fancy al at the end. Pyramid will get you the mark. Here's an ammonia molecule. Show all the dots as dots. Show them all as crosses. It's all fine. Don't worry about the fact that I've changed them around. Um, anything along these lines will get you the mark there. And nitric acid is produced by the Oswald process. That's just straightforward memory. Here is one that had me scratching the top of my bald head over this one, which is a bar graph of four marks. I don't know how they're going to allocate that. I would go 0, 10, 20, 30 on this scale and use percentage here. You might need the word as well. Um, and then source of ammonia along here. Draw some bars, get them at the right height, get four marks. Dead easy. Um, flowchart, making it more economical. We've got carbon and dioxide and ammonia coming out and we've got them going in here. So all you need to do is put them back into the reactor. Ignore that. Uh, two of the questions where you have to read the passage and answer the answer the questions. Questions. You know what I mean. Um, essential oils. Uh, put the numbers from here into here and gain an easy two marks. The easy all marks, actually, because you don't need to remember anything. You just need to read the passage. Uh, this one here, reacted with bromine water. You get instant decolorization. I think you'll probably need both to get the mark there. I have no clue what they're looking for here. Um, I, actually, I know what the answer is from a chemistry point of view, but I don't know what on earth they're looking for here because it says in this course specifications that larger molecules have stronger intermolecular forces. That is true. These are not larger. These all have the same GFM. So for the life of me, I'm not sure what they're looking for there. Because it sounds like they expect you to know the answer. Um, three lots of that gives you that. Um, it's a homologous series. That's that definition there. We've got an increase in 13, so the jumps in 13, then it jumps by 19, then it only jumps, then it jumps by 21, so presumably looking for something a little bit more than 21, so maybe 140, plus or minus a certain amount, but I don't know what that certain amount is, until the official mark scheme comes out. The relationship here is larger molecules have a higher boiling point. Problem solving. You've never heard of this chemical. Um, but it tells you in the question that turns alcohols into carboxylic acids. So we're changing from hydroxyls to carboxyls for the functional group. And if we start with propanol, you'll make propanoic acid. I don't know for the life of me why I've... Oh no, I know why. Um, butanol will therefore turn into butanoic acid, my least favourite chemical in the world ever, because it smells of vomit. Come back at higher, we'll get to play with that. Uh, potassium dichromate, that's page 8 on the data book. We don't use this dichromate ion very much, but it's in there and it's got a charge of 2 minus. So potassiums each will have a charge of 1 plus due to its valency, you'll need 2 of them. That's the formula and the charges for that one. Quite a difficult one now, actually. This is a really nice open ender. You can write anything you like based on 
um, the elements in the position that the periodic table. You can talk about metals, non-metals, you can talk about outer electrons, you can talk about um, the groups, uh, groups one and two and their names and so on. That's a gift. Uh, copper conducts because it has delocalized uh, electrons. Uh, copper can be extracted from its ore, usually by reacting with either carbon, which is what we did in the classroom, carbon monoxide, not so much, because I didn't really want to kill you. Well, not all of you, anyway. Um, electrolysis, I would imagine, they would also allow, as a valid answer if you put that. Uh, this is a nice problem-solving one, in which we have to order these metals compared to copper. Two of them will be above copper, shown by the direction of electron flow, and two of them will be below. Um, to sort them out, you need to look at the size of the voltage that you have produced. Sorry, not comparing that with that, comparing that with that. So C is furthest away, then A, then copper, then D, then B. Look, this is an interesting question here, because uh, this is one that I've seen a long time ago, when we used to teach you about sugars. Glucose is not in the course anymore. So they're expecting you to extrapolate from that that it's covalent because it only contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And your current level of understanding means that if you dissolve a covalent molecule in water, it doesn't conduct. I wonder how many people will get that one. Uh, that's an iron bridge, that's easy, and you need a soluble lead compound from page 8 in your data booklet, the solubility. I've picked lead nitrate. It's the only one that springs off the top of my mind as being soluble. Then we come to our second, read the passage and answer the questions. One here, um, ozone kills bacteria and viruses. Uh, name the elements found in sodium hypo no 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 sodium hydrogen sulfite. That seems a lot of work for one mark, but then again, maybe not. This one here, turn this sentence here into sorry, turn that sentence here into an equation. You get this. Don't need to balance it, so I'm not going to. Problem solving with organics. What's happening here? You're chopping the molecule of the double bond. You're adding an oxygen on each end. If you do the same, you end up with that and that. The, these are all spectators. So leave the silver in, leave the chloride in, and leave the silver chloride in. Precipitation, because you've got all solubles and making one insoluble here. Uh, we're on to titration questions. A pipette is what you would use for 10 centimetres cubed in the bottom beaker. It's the most accurate way of doing it. Only results 2 and 3 are used. We chucked out results 1 because it is not concordant. Then we have the actual calculation here. I've done a wee diagram to try and figure out what's going on where. So here's your oxalic acid. Here's your sodium hydroxide, which I haven't labelled because I'm a muppet. Um, here's the three stages of the calculation. Moles of oxalic acid. Use the ratio of oxalic acid to sodium hydroxide. It gives you that number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Lastly, calculate the concentration. You end up with that. Don't put the unit in because it's in the question. Uh, this is a weird one, but whatever. Um, pink to colourless. Uh, how would you know when the reaction was done? Because you will find some... Nickel carbonate powder, which is not reacted, so you'll get some leftover powder at the bottom of the beaker at the end of the reaction. This one here, I was thinking salt, first of all. I'd actually like to disagree um, with this one, but that's okay. Water is produced in all neutralization reactions. Uh, that's the only one you can name because the salt has not got a constant name. The term used to name a substance, that would be a base if it neutralizes an acid. Um, here we've got the number of moles is concentration times volume. Don't forget to divide your 25 mils by 1,000. You get that. If you're separating a solid from a solution, it's filtering or filtration. Same thing. You leave it to evaporate for a few days, or those of us with a shorter attention span, we can simply boil or heat the solution. You'll drive the water off that way. This was an easy three marks. Blimey. Um, I would have picked one that was more complex, but whatever. Um, it's 58.5 divided by the GFM times 100, 37.9%. Uh, a hydrocarbon contains only hydrogen and carbon. I think you'll need that. They're getting a wee bit pedantic these days about that. Problem solving. What is going on here in this question? This is a problem solving. So this is this. All this nonsense here is for the bonds being broken for this reaction. So this side corresponds to this. And the other side corresponds to the next page. 
So this is the bonds that are being formed. Multiply them up, add them all together. And lastly, they're asking you to work out the overall energy change, which I got to be negative 816. I think that might fox a few people, but don't stress over it. It's only worth one mark if you haven't got it. Another problem solving one, this time based on organic content, we've got octane is being reformed and it does say here reforming is a chemical reaction that changes the arrangement without changing the number of carbon atoms so you can do that with it or you can curve it around on itself into this nice octagon structure got to name this one so that is 2,4-dimethylhexane 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 2,4-dimethylhexane is the proper name for that one do the same with this one into a cycloalkane you've only got 6 carbons it says up here you have to keep the number of carbons the same, so you're going to get cyclohexane. Uh, I was too lazy to put the other H's on. You will have to do that. This is interesting because the second part of the question here goes on to talk about something called cracking, which used to be in the course but isn't anymore. Now, there's the danger of that is that the question setter assumes that the pupils know about cracking. And the reason I've drawn the arrow over from the other page is it would have been really useful if they said in cracking once again you don't change the number of carbon atoms and they haven't said that so the question writer has made the assumption that you know that if you start with eight carbon atoms you'll still only have eight carbon atoms in total two of them are used up here so the other six must be in here in the form of this i wonder how many people will get the marks for this be interesting to see the markers report on this when it comes out this is hydration. I think they'll also accept addition, but don't quote me on that because I am not the official answer. Ethine, never heard of it. Um, it's got a triple bond in it and it goes to make this, but that is not important. What's actually happening is this is getting polymerized. So this is joining up to itself. Name the polymer, that'll be poly, and then whatever that name is. Yep, just copy it right down there, ethenol. I know we've never heard of it. And then lastly, draw the repeating structure of the polymer made from ethanol. Now, you must break open that double bond there, so single bonds only, and everything else remains the same. Don't think you need the square brackets. Don't stress over that. Second and last question is our open-ender, which is a nice one. Again, radioactive decay. You can talk about any three points here in radioactive decay you like. You can do alpha, beta, gamma. You can talk about half-lives. You can talk about... Um, how to stop alpha and beta uh, and gamma. So they are a gift, the two open-enders in this, and that's the end of the paper. Bye-bye.